Greetings and welcome to this video that will be covering another part of applications in strength of materials or mechanics of materials, whichever course you're taking. This one will be covering thermal deformation as well as uh, in a little bit we'll discuss the stress that can be induced uh, when you have thermal deformation. And uh, we'll be doing it in the context of an example. And this example is a laparoscopic surgical tool. And here's an example of one. Uh, if you'll notice, we have uh, an aluminum or possibly steel, depending on the model, inner shaft. And on the exterior, there is insulation and it's uh, shrink tubing. Now, I don't even know this particular brand, but uh, they're all built roughly the same kind of a way. This uh, scissors actuator pushes a rod which uh, moves these two uh, paddles that can clamp on tissue in the body. Now, the interesting bit here is you have a post here that is attached to an electric uh, electrosurgical unit and that transmits uh, electrical energy down the shaft and to these paddles. Well, uh, you need to have the shaft insulated uh, for that purpose because you only want the uh, electricity to be uh, sent to the patient through what you can see in this area and this area is sometimes blocked and it needs to be insulated for uh, many safety reasons. So. Uh, we have shrink tube here, and we have it over a metal shaft. Now, some of these are uh, reusable, or they can be reused a few times. Um, in order to sterilize them, they may put them, uh, probably put them, in an autoclave. So um, what uh, that does is that it raises the temperature and... Uh, therefore these materials will expand but they're very different materials so they expand at different rates so um, that can cause some problems so as they expand and then contract they can shift with respect to one another uh, so that can cause some problems so let's uh, go to a simplified version of this and this is a, a model of that same setup, just a little more simplified, where we have a 10 inch steel inner shaft with a 9 inch shrink tubing over it. We are going to initially assume that they're both held at this red uh, base here. So where it's red, uh, they are held in place. But they uh, they're free to move with respect to each other at this end. Okay, so this is our setup, and they are held at the base there. All right, back to where we're going to work out the problem. Let's go to um, our key equations here. We have one key equation for thermal deformation. The deflection of an object that changes temperature is dependent on alpha, which is its coefficient of thermal expansion times its length times the change in temperature. So let me write that down again. This is change in length or deflection. This is the coefficient of thermal expansion. This is the length and this is change in temperature. Okay, now that we've got that down, 
Uh, what we're trying to find to start off with is the change in length of each and the difference. So we'll do that as part A here. So this should be fairly easy. So what we want to do is we want to write down what's given or what we need to look up. We need the coefficient of thermal expansion. We need the length. And we need the change in temperature of each one. Later on, we will probably need the uh, modulus of elasticity. So we're going to look that up as well. We will do all of this in US units. So the coefficient of thermal expansion in US units is inches per inch degrees Fahrenheit. It could also be Drankine, but that's another story. Um, notice how this is uh, inches per inch. And yes, those could be canceled out, but it's nice to put that in there because it kind of gives you a indicator that it's going to stretch more the longer it is. So it uh, expands more the larger or longer that this uh, part is. And the units uh, still work out. And length, we'll simply have inches, change in temperature, degrees Fahrenheit, and modulus of elasticity, kilopounds or kips per square inch. So we'll look those things up. I've decided to use 304 stainless steel and for the shrink tubing we'll use FEP. Okay so where do we find this information? Well that's what they made the internet for. I found at aksteel.com, a uh, supplier of 304 and 304L stainless steel. And we will go to the coefficient of thermal expansion here. And we're going to be kind of in this range. Okay, so 9.4, 9.6. If we just round it to uh, 9.5, uh, that should work out. For the 304 stainless steel, it's... 9.5 times 10 to the negative sixth inches per inch degree Fahrenheit. This is from uh, Parker Hannafin. Found some FEP and the linear coefficient of thermal expansion here is this is in micro inches. I'm not sure what I have the big M here, but um, for FEP, it's 46.1 to 58.3. So we'll just estimate it to be around 50. Notice how there's a big difference between the FEP and the 304, 9.5 versus 50. Okay, so we're given our initial length. So the stainless steel is 10 inches. The FEP is nine inches. Uh, change in temperature. Um, I looked that up and uh, the highest temperature would be 273 degrees Fahrenheit and these instruments would be used at room temperature which would be 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So that difference for both the 304 and the FEP is going to be 203 degrees Fahrenheit. And the modulus of elasticity, again, we'll probably use this later in KSI uh, for the stainless steel is 28,000. As you can see right here, 28 times 10 to the third KSI. 
For the FEP, it has an elastic modulus of 50,000 PSI. So that's only 50 KSI. So you can see that these two materials are very different in their properties. Okay, so uh, now that we have all this set up, by the way, it's very good to set these kinds of things up. Figure out what you're looking for, write down all the givens, even some that you may not need, and uh, figure out your key equations, and then go ahead and plug and chug. Instead of trying to plug and chug and, and get all messed up, this is, um, despite my uh, handwriting on this tablet, um, this is actually at least an organized way of setting it up, even if it's not the neatest handwriting. Okay, so for the stainless steel, our deflection is equal to alpha L delta T, and that is 9.5 times 10 to the negative sixth inches per inch degree Fahrenheit times 10.0 inches times 203 degrees Fahrenheit. That ends up being 0 0.019 inches. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but uh, when you're trying to keep tolerances within maybe just a few thousand or maybe a, a hundredth of an inch, that can make a big difference depending on uh, how the parts go together. For the FEP, our deflection is going to use the same formula, just different numbers. So the FEP has a coefficient of thermal expansion of 50 times 10 to the negative sixth inches per inch degree Fahrenheit times 9.0 inches times 203 degrees Fahrenheit. And that will have it expand 0.091 inches. So you can see this is a much larger deflection than this because of the coefficient of thermal expansion. Okay, as you might imagine, um, these two uh, shift differently. So there is a, a definitely a difference between them, so they have to slip, especially if that if that end is held, then they're going to have a, quite a difference um, from the top. It's not going to be 1.0 inches anymore. It's going to be uh, 1.07 inches, roughly. So that difference here is 0.091 minus 0 0.019 inches, and that's going to be 0 0.072 inches. However, that is the change from the end here to the end up here. Now if there is some part of the assembly that requires uh, that distance to remain stable or to be a certain distance, well then that's important. But I'm actually quite interested in how much this actually slips. So to figure out the slip, we care about the distance that the end of the shrink tubing makes with respect to exactly where it started, which is at nine inches from the bottom. So we need to calculate the amount that the steel has expanded from zero to nine inches to see what the difference is going to be. So let's go back and do that. 
So in terms of slip, it's change of FEP minus change of stainless steel all for 9 inches. That is alpha L delta T of the FEP minus alpha L delta T of the steel. And the neat thing about that is that the only difference between those two is alpha. L is the same. Delta T is the same because we have length of 9. We got a change in temperature of 203. So we can rewrite this in a slightly more simple form, which is alpha FEP minus alpha stainless steel times L times delta T. And so what we have is 50 minus 9.5 is 40.5 inches per inch degree Fahrenheit times 9.0 inches times 203 degrees Fahrenheit. Those units cancel out. Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit, inches, inches, and we end up with 0 0.074 inches. That's the slip between the shrink tubing and the stainless steel for just those 9 inches of their initial contact length. Okay, to summarize, this problem was all about thermal deformation and we used the thermal deformation equation here three times. The first to find the total deformation of the stainless steel, the second to find the total deformation of the shrink tubing. We notice the difference right here between the coefficients of thermal expansion and how that made a very big difference in their total deflections each. We found the difference between the two, but then we took another step beyond that and found the slip just of the initial contact area of 9 inch. And we were able to simplify this and we found the difference between the coefficients of thermal expansion and did our calculation out so that we know that the difference in slip is 0.074 inches. And that is the uh, slip that's going to happen every time it goes through a thermal cycling in the autoclave. So it can be pretty substantial, especially if you do it several times and maybe they don't come back to the same place each time. So it could actually creep and cause a problem. So I hope that this video has helped you understand thermal deformation and some of its implications in the real world. Stay tuned for the next video of thermal stress where you have changes in temperature without the deformation that creates a stress.